this is a time of weeping and tragedy. It's a time of weeping and mourning over the tragedies that have befallen Israel and the Jewish people. And I think it's an important message. I think it's a poignant message. And uh, we got into some of it on yesterday night, on Friday night, but I want to dive into it a little bit deeper and explore it from a slightly different perspective. And so, as I said, many tragic events happened on this day throughout history at this time. But I want to ask this question, why did Yeshua weep? You know, there's not many places in the New Covenant in which Yeshua wept. One time we read that he wept over the death of Lazarus over the loss of a friend. But the second time we see that he weeps, we read this in Luke chapter 19. It says, as he drew near and saw Jerusalem, he wept over her. So this is the scene, right? Yeshua is coming into Jerusalem. It is during his triumphal entry, and he's actually on the top of the Mount of Olives, and he's riding down the Mount of Olives into Jerusalem. And the question that we have to ask ourselves is, why is it important that he weeps over Jerusalem as he's on the Mount of Olives I love taking people to Israel. I love one of my favorite spots is the Mount of Olives. And what we have to understand is the Mount of Olives is so significant for so many reasons. But one reason is because when the prophet Ezekiel saw the glory of God depart Jerusalem, it left and went over the Mount of Olives as it and then went up to heaven and was removed. And so there's even a spot on the Mount of Olives where there's a church that's been built called Dominus Flavus, which literally means, uh, and he wept. It's a Latin. So the other thing we have to understand is that on the Mount of Olives, as you're standing on the Mount of Olives, you can literally see into the temple. You could see all the sacrifices being offered. You could see the priests and the Levites worshiping. And if the doors to the holy place were open, you could actually see into the holy place and perhaps even the curtain of the Holy of Holies. All that can be seen from the Mount of Olives, from the place that Yeshua stopped on his ascent into the temple on that Sunday. So it's the context is so important. But the question that we still have to ask is, why does Yeshua weep? What moved him to weep over Jerusalem at that moment? And I believe first and foremost, what caused Yeshua to weep, what moved the heart of Yeshua at that moment? Remember, only two times is it recorded specifically that he wept. Yeshua wept because his heart was moved with compassion. Yeshua's ministry was motivated by love and compassion. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But we also read about this. It says this. Now, Yeshua was going around to the towns and the villages, teaching in the synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, healing every kind of disease and sickness. And when he saw the crowds, he felt compassion for them because he saw that they were like sheep without a shepherd. His heart was moved with compassion. That's what moved. That's what motivated Yeshua. 
And we read in Psalm 103, 13, as a father has compassion upon his children, so Adonai has compassion on those who fear or revere him. So it's interesting that Psalm 113, Psalm 103, 13 talks about the father's heart of compassion, and that is the compassion, it's the compassion of a father towards his children that causes our heavenly father to have compassion upon us. And Yeshua embodies the heart of a good father, which is one of loving compassion. What's, what's amazing is that Yeshua, okay, weeps over Jerusalem. We weep in this month. This is Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av. Av literally means father. This is the month in a sense of the father. Because even though there were tragedies, it's also there's also this connection to compassion and comfort. So Yeshua weeps and we weep in this month of the Father is connected to, is connected to the revelation of the heart of the Father for his people, for his children. And what's also interesting is that um, Yeshua began his ministry at 30 years of age. 30 in Hebrew is written with the letter Lamed. And when you put the two letter Lameds together back to back, it actually forms a picture of a heart. So the letter Lamed is connected to the heart. Literally, the Lamed is the first letter of the word for heart in Hebrew, Lev. And two Lameds together face to face form a heart. So even his beginning, his ministry at 30 years old is meant to reveal God's heart. It's it's meant to reveal the love of the Father for us. But there's more. Yeshua weeps. Yeshua wept, I believe, out of compassion for the past sufferings of Israel. Just like he was moved with compassion when he saw the people hurting. So Yeshua was moved with a heart of compassion that caused him to weep as he remembered the past tragedy of Israel that happened on this day in history. It's crazy when we think about everything that happened on this day. So what were the things that happened in the past that caused him to weep? Number one, in the Hebrew year 2448, 312 BC, the spies returned, the 12 spies returned from 40 days of spying out the promised land, and they bring an evil report, and the people hear the evil report, and the children of Israel, the adults, cry out in despair and don't believe God when he tells them and to go in and take the land, don't want to listen to Moses, Joshua, Caleb. And so because they weep, because of their fear, because of their doubt, because of their unbelief, that generation died in the wilderness. An entire generation that saw God's miracles died in the wilderness because of their lack of faith. Because they chose fear over faith. Listen, when we choose fear, our lives will be left in a state of utter destruction. But in 330, but in 3340 of the Hebrew calendar, or 521 BC, or CE is another way of saying it. Okay. Or BCE. We have the destruction of the first temple known as the Beit Hamikdash. Can you say Beit Hamikdash? The first temple. by the Babylonians under Nebuchadnezzar, about 100,000 Jewish people, Israelites, were killed at this time, and the majority of the rest, like Daniel, were sent into exile to Babylon and Persia. So Yeshua's heart was moved by compassion as he looked at the temple and remembered 
the great loss of the first temple, the number of his people that had died, the sin of the spies, a generation that died in the wilderness. But he also wept because prophetically he knew of the great suffering that Israel would experience in the future. As he drew near and saw Jerusalem, he wept over her saying, if only you would recognize this day the things that lead to shalom, but now they are hidden from your eyes. For the days are coming when your enemies will surround you with barricades and hem you in on all sides, and they will smash you to the ground and your children with you, and they won't leave one stone upon another because you did not recognize the day of your visitation. Yeshua weeps over Jerusalem, not just because of the past destruction, but because he realizes that they were not going to recognize that he was the Mashiach, that he was the Messiah, that he was the one sent from God. And because they missed the day of their visitation, they were going to be sieged by the Romans and the temple was going to be destroyed and there was going to be the greatest up to that point, tragedy in the history of the Jewish people, the destruction of the second temple under the Romans, under the Roman general Titus, over 2,500,000 Jewish people died from war and famine and disease, and over 1 million Jewish people were exiled. Many of over 100,000 were sold as slaves or were forced to go into the gladiatorial games and tortured at pagan celebrations. Yeshua knew what was coming as a result from this, and his heart was broken for his people. Yes, Aaron, there's always more. There's many other tragedy, tragic events. In 133 of the first century, right? 133 AD, a Roman leader plowed the temple of uh, plowed the temple mount, made it Jerusalem into a pagan city, and called it Alia Capitolina. The first crusade led by Pope Urban, which killed a lot of Jews. The expulsion of the Jewish people from England in 1290. The Spanish Inquisition, where, where there was a golden age of Jewish life and philosophy and religion. Jews were expelled from Spain in 1492, the same year Columbus sailed the ocean blue. In 1914, Britain and Russia declare war on Germany. World War I, which ultimately led to World War II and, and the Holocaust. This is the 9th of Av, on the 7th of Av, July 13th, 1941, the final solution directive was signed by Hermann Goring. So two days before Tisha B'Av in 1941, the final solution to kill all Jews was signed. No coincidence. On the 9th of Av, 1942, deportations began from the Warsaw Ghetto to Treblinka concentration camp. All of these tragedies happened on the 9th of Av. It is no coincidence. It is God's hand in history. Yeshua wept because he knew that the he knew of the suffering of the Jewish people, but he also knew why the temple would be destroyed. And it was because of the death of his temple, the death of Yeshua's temple would lead to the destruction of the second temple. This, right? We got to understand John 2.19. Yeshua said, destroy this temple. He's in Jerusalem. He just cleansed the money changers. He said, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up again. Religious leaders said it took 46 years to build this temple and you're going to destroy it and raise it up in three days. But he was talking about the temple of his body. Yeshua likens his body to the temple in Jerusalem. Why? Listen, 
The temple in Jerusalem was meant to be the center of worship. You you prayed towards Jerusalem. In the temple, in the Holy of Holies, the Kavo, the glory of God, was meant to dwell there. But even the rabbis say in the second temple, the glory of God, for the most part, did not reside. There was no Ark of the Covenant in the second temple. The glory that was supposed to reside in the second temple, the Shekhinah, dwelt behind the curtain of Yeshua's flesh. He was the walking, living temple and tabernacle in the midst. And that's why John 1.14 says, and the word became flesh and what? Tabernacled among us. The kavo, the glory of God that departed from the temple, returned in the person of Yeshua. That's part of the reason why Yeshua had to come into Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives because the glory left over the Mount of Olives and he wanted to restore it by means of the Mount of Olives. But even as he was going in, he knew that they would not understand it and that his temple would be destroyed. It's powerful. But where does we but where do we see Yeshua weeping? Where do we see Yeshua weeping over the coming destruction, not just of the temple in Jerusalem, but over the destruction of his temple? He wept over the destruction of his body, of his life, like he wept over the destruction of the temple in Luke 22, 39, in the Garden of Gethsemane. What's amazing is where is the Garden of Gethsemane? The Garden of Gethsemane is just a little bit lower than the spot on the Mount of the of the Mount of Olives where Yeshua wept over Jerusalem. We talked about as he was riding in from the Mount of Olives is a little bit higher than the Garden of Gethsemane, which is also on the Mount of Olives, is at the base of the Mount of Olives. And we read this, and Yeshua came out as he went, as usual, to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. And he reached a place, he said to them, pray that you will not enter into temptation. And he pulled back a stone's throw from them, and he got on his knees and began to pray, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Now the angel from heaven appeared to strengthen him, and in his anguish he was fervently praying, and his sweat like drops of blood falling down on the ground. And when he rose up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them asleep, and he said to them, Why are you weeping? Get up and pray, so that you will not enter into temptation. Yeshua was weeping and interceding before the Father. And he said, Lord, take this cup from me. Yeshua's willingness to drink of the cup was one of his greatest acts of compassion. Yeshua drank the cup of judgment so that you don't have to drink the cup, so that I don't have to drink of cup. He drank your pain and punishment. Yeshua drank your pain and punishment. He didn't just take the sip. He drained the cup for you. Our Savior suffered so that you and I don't have to. And what we have to understand is that the rabbis say this. They say that God, so this is the month of Av. This is the month connected to the Father. The Father is connected to compassion. This month, though, is a month of tragedy. How do we connect the Father's heart, the Father's compassion, when, when in the month that the first and second temple destroyed and all of these tragedies occurred? Let me tell you, okay? The rabbis say that God's destruction of the first and second temple was actually one of his greatest acts of kindness and compassion because God, instead of destroying the Jewish people, decided that he would take his judgment out upon the, the, the wood and the stones of his house. He would destroy his house rather than destroying his people. 
And that's Yeshua's analogy. Destroy this house. Yeshua allowed himself to be destroyed because it was one of the greatest acts of compassion by allowing his temple, his body to be destroyed. Like the rabbis say, God allowed the temple in Jerusalem to be destroyed as an act of compassion. It's because of that that his people are not destroyed. But I want us to explore this on a deeper level. Thank you, Sean. I want us to explore this and understand because there's something more, something deeper, something significant to understand why God destroyed the first house of God, the first temple, and the second house of God. The first destruction of the first temple was because of Avodah Zarah. Can you say Avodah Zarah, which means idol worship? Idol worship. Avodah is worship and Zarah is a strange gods, idol worship. The second temple was destroyed because of senseless hatred, Sinat Chinom. First temple idolatry, second temple senseless hatred. And these two sins correspond to the two tablets Moses received at Mount Sinai. So the two reasons why the first and second temple were destroyed correspond to the two tablets that Moses received at Mount Sinai. The first set of tablets were written five commandments, and those five commandments are commandments between God and man, known as mitzvot. Mitzvot, they were commandments uh, between uh, le makom, uh, mitzvot ben le makom, commandments between God and man, okay? And the second set of tablets were commandments between man and man. The second five were between man and man, how we don't covet, right? Don't murder, don't steal. They're between individuals. Don't, right? They're between individuals. So these two tablets that Moses received at Mount Sinai, which correspond to the two sins that Israel committed that led to the two destruction of the first and second temple, Messiah Yeshua, Messiah Jesus, comes along and he summarizes these two tablets with the two great commandments. Love the Lord your God is the summary of the first tablet and love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord your God is the first tablet. Love your neighbor as yourself is the second tablet. It's so important. It's so important. Listen. Yeshua message was a message of love and compassion. The second temple was destroyed because of senseless hatred. If 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 the children of Israel, if the Jewish people would have understood and received Yeshua and his message, he was giving them the key and the antidote that would have prevented the destruction of the second temple and would have led to the establishment of the kingdom of God. He gave them the antidote that would have cured the senseless hatred. But their hate was so senseless that they killed their Messiah. <laughs> and ultimately, the senseless hatred led to infighting among the different uh, different groups and different factions and sects within within Judaism that led to the destruction of the second temple. Because here's the thing, the foundation of God's commandments, the foundation of the temple was love. And once love was gone, the foundation was destroyed. And when the foundation is destroyed, Who can stand? Love is the foundation. We build our life upon love. Paul says, love one another and fulfill the the law of Messiah. 
And love of Messiah, love of God, love of Messiah is the foundation. And then love your neighbor as yourself. So I want us to see this. When Yeshua died on the tree, right? We call it a cross, right? It, it, it looks something like this, right? There was the there was the vertical part of the cross beam, and there was the cross that was the stake, and then there was the horizontal part of the cross beam. Listen, this part on which the sign King of the Jews was nailed represents the first commandment, the vertical commandments. It represents love the Lord your God. The cross beam, which went this way, represented love your neighbor as yourself. And Yeshua was crucified at the intersection of, of those two beams. He died to demonstrate love of God and love for our neighbor. He died because we have failed to truly love God and love our neighbor. But that is the power of his love. Love up and love out. The two great commandments, which he most fully embodied when he gave his life on the cross. And Yeshua wept because he knew the suffering that God's people would inflict upon each other and inflict upon the world. Listen, how many wars have been fought in the name of false Christianity, right? Uh, I mean, war, senseless wars and both all sorts of battles and infighting and crazy things have been done in the name of the Lord, in the name of Yeshua. Jews have been persecuted terribly in the name of Jesus. Now, I'm not saying these were real believers. Uh, some probably were, many weren't. Most of it, a lot of it was done in religion, but that's the tr truth. Whether it was real or not real, his name was used. But listen to this. Peter writes, as you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a spiritual priest and an offering to God. Friends, we are the living stones in his temple. We are being formed into a spiritual temple. The, the temple literally is called the Beit Hamikdash, the holy house. It's the same word used for spiritual house. It's called the house. Har Habayit, it's called in Hebrew. The temple mount literally means the mount of the house. Listen, Yeshua cares about how we treat each other. You know one of the things that hurts me the most in life? When my kids fight and say terrible things to each other. Oh my goodness. It's like taking a knife and cutting my heart. And one day, <laughs> my oldest asked me, Daddy, Abba, what's, we're, we're, we're saying the Shema, Right. And we're saying, here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. And we say, love your neighbor as yourself. And Avi asked me, Abba, what do you think is more important, to love God or to love people? And like a good rabbi, like Yeshua often did, I answered a question with a question, what do you think? He said, well, we're called to love people and not things. So I guess to love people is to love God. He got it right. To really love God, we have to love people. We can't say we love God and hate our neighbor. 
And love is having compassion for each other. Love is taking care of each other. Love is speaking to one another with honor and respect, especially when we disagree, especially when we're hurt. I know it's hard, but just because we're hurt, it doesn't mean that we can say hurtful things to other people or take vengeance or be mean. Our love, the true nature of our heart and of our love is how we treat other people who hurt us. And so practically, what does this mean for us? This month of Av is, is, is associated with compassion and comfort because ultimately God provides the solution to senseless hatred and to idolatry and to our sin. It's a month of compassion because although all of these tragedies have happened, Am Yisrael Chai, the people of Israel live. Oda of Yinuhai, because our Father in heaven lives. Because Yeshua lives, because God honors his covenant from Haman to Hitler. God has not allowed his people to be destroyed. Yes, we've suffered. Yes, there's been tremendous loss. But God's people, whether it's Israel or the church, will never be destroyed because of God's love and compassion and covenant commitment and faithfulness. So what practically does this mean for us? Friends, this has to be a season of restoration. That is, the, that is part of the, the message of Tisha B'Av, of the ninth of Av, that we can move forward towards restoration. It's not to wallow in grief and, and pity and, oh, I'm such a, you know, this is so horrible. Yes, we look at our lives and we say, what have I done wrong? How have I contributed to just hurting other people, to hurting the world, right, to preventing the return of the Messiah, right? But that 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 is meant to lead us to repent, to return to God. That returning to God brings a restoration, right? We take the sadness, we take the pain, and we use it as a catalyst to rebuild. We replace the destructive emotions with constructive actions. We replace the destructive emotions with constructive actions. And we resolve to do differently today and seize this opportunity and do what we can do. And part of what we need to do to bring restoration is to show great love. Great love. If it was bickering and gossiping and hatred that caused the temple to be destroyed, we have to come back with great love and with great compassion if you know someone is in pain or hurting, ask, what can I do to make it better? Give them a call. Send them a card. Offer to do an errand. Just as one painful act or one painful person, I'm sorry, one painful act or one a painful word can destroy a person it can one word or one deed of gesture of loving kindness can begin to rebuild them. Feel the pain of others like Yeshua felt the pain and was moved to compassion for the people that he saw that were like sheep without a shepherd. Listen, your 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 life is filled with people that don't have they're like sheep without a shepherd. for persecuted believers around the world, our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world. Ask God to watch over them, to protect them. Let's pursue unity and oneness. So restoration, pursue restoration, pursue healing and helping to bring wholeness and love and kindness in other people's lives. Feel other people's pain, those around you. But the second is spiritual connection. The first temple was destroyed because of senseless hatred. It was, I mean, second, first temple was destroyed because of idolatry. People lost their connection to God. We have to pursue a deeper connection. Listen, the cause of, of, the, of both sins, 
the, the, the sins that led to the destruction of the first, the second temple. The first was disconnection from God, and the second was disconnection from other people. Listen, we always say fusion is about connection. The power of fusion is the power of connection. This is a season to pursue spiritual connection on a deeper level. Connect with your roots. Connect with God. Pursue him. Mourn for Jerusalem. Do we really feel the pain? Do we really feel the void that is the result of God's house? I think many believers don't feel that pain. What does it mean that God's house is not in Jerusalem? Listen, Jewish people, one of the reasons why Jewish people break glasses at their weddings is that in the most joyous moment, they want to remember the destruction of Jerusalem. Why the destruction of Jerusalem and our greatest moments of joy? Because we're compelled to remember that our happiness is incomplete. It cannot be complete until the kingdom of God is completely here, till the kingdom is here on earth as it is in heaven. And because the kingdom is not here because Yeshua is not here because God is not dwelling in our midst and ruling and reigning from Jerusalem, from the new Jerusalem. That means that there's pain and persecution, that there's people dying without a connection to our heavenly father. And this should lead us to weep. And in fact, Yeshua, as he was going into Jerusalem said, you will not see me again until you say Baruch Ababa Shaman and I, until Israel welcomes the Messiah, until Israel longs for her Messiah, okay, and receives her. He will not return. Pray for the redemption of the Jewish people, that their eyes and hearts would be open to Yeshua, our Messiah. Let's love the Jewish people. Friends, there is a tremendous, it's concerning me. There is a tremendous rise in people being anti-Israel. There's an all-on attack in the United States and around the world to attack Israel over the issue with the Palestinians. Now listen, we need to have love and compassion for the Palestinians. But friends, God promised the land of Israel to the Jewish people. There are those who want to see attacking Israel. They want to see its demise or see it at least giving a, a lessening, a giving up of Jerusalem. But there's also a rise in anti-Semitism. Listen, it is dangerous to be religiously Jewish in Europe. Even in the United States, one of the greatest rises in anti-Semitism all around the world, Jews just being beat up on the street houses of worship being vandalized. The Psalms are clear. It says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Those who love you will prosper. May there be peace within your walls. How can we celebrate a house when God's home has been burned? We need to take a moment to mourn. And we need to take a moment to pray and stand with Israel. On Tisha B'Av, there are five restrictions that are tra the traditional Jews. From tonight at sunset to tomorrow at sunset, no eating or drinking, no washing or bathing, no application of creams or oils, no wearing leather shoes, and no marital relations. Traditional to say special prayers for the redemption of Israel and to read the book of Echa, which in English is the book of Lamentations written by the prophet Jeremiah. So friends, Yeshua, if Yeshua wept over Jerusalem, shouldn't we be willing to weep over Jerusalem as well? Shouldn't our heart be moved by the things that move his heart. It says, weep with those who weep.
if you if the nations the gentiles have been grafted in to the olive tree and become part of the partakers of the covenant that God made with Israel and if the Jewish people are family then shouldn't we mourn with them and fulfill the commandment to weep with those who weep and to mourn with those who mourn this should be a special focus over these days and i just want to take a moment and uh i just want to say a prayer i want to read one of the traditional tisha b'av prayers and then pray as we close zehor adonai Mehayalanu Habita or E et Herpatenu. Remember, O Lord, what has befallen us. Look and see our disgrace. Our inheritance has been turned over to strangers, our homes to foreigners. We have become orphans, fatherless. Our mothers lament in the month of Av. We pay money to drink our own water because we scorn the water libation ceremony. Upon our necks we are pursued because we purposed purposeless hatred. We stretched out our, we stretched out a hand to Egypt while Assyria trapped us like a hunter. Our fathers have sinned and are no more. And we continue in their ways, bearing the burden of their iniquities. Slaves rule over us because we discontinued the liberation of the slaves. In mortal danger, we eat our bread because we have clamped our hands tightly against the poor. Our skin was scorched like an oven because they exchanged their dignity for degradation. They ravaged women in Zion because they sullied and seduced their neighbors' wives. Leaders were hanged by their hand because they plundered and robbed the resources of the poor. Young men bear the millstone because they were found in the prostitute's house. The elders are gone from the gate because they twisted the judgment of the orphan and the widow and did not give them justice or care. Gone is the joy of our hearts because the festival pilgrimage has been discontinued. The crown of our head has fallen because the holy house of God has been burnt down. For this our heart was faint, because the glory ceased from the house of our aspirations, from Mount Zion which lies desolate, because the temple mount lies in ruin. Yet Adonai, you are enthroned forever. Ata Adonai Leolam, te shev kis achalidor vador. Yet you are enthroned forever. Your throne is throughout the generations. Lama lenetzach tishkachenu ta'atzvenu le'orecha yamim. Why do you ignore us, forsake us for so long? Hashivenu Adonai elecha cause us to return to you, O Lord. V'nashuva, and we will return. Chadesh yamenu kekedem and renew our days as of old. Hashivenu Elecha, cause us to return to you, O Lord. Vinashuva Yamenu Kikedem, cause us to return, and we will return. Renew our days as of old. Avinu Shabashamayim. Ad matai team lok bitzion. How long will it be until you reign in Zion? 
How long will we wait for your return? We long for you as the watchman longs for the morning. We long for the coming of Yeshua, our Mashiach, our Messiah. We long, God, for the Bnei Yisrael, the children of Israel, to have their eyes opened that you are the Messiah, the one whom they, the one who was pierced, the one who was rejected. Open their eyes and open their hearts so that Israel return to you and cry out for their holy Messiah. Lord, forgive us because we have sinned. Forgive us for the senseless hatred of our forefathers and mothers that we continue to walk in. Forgive us when our words destroy your temple Destroy the people who are made in your image. Forgive the people, forgive your people, Lord, the people who say that they believe in Yeshua for all the all the nasty things, for all the infighting, for all the denominational divisions, God, for all the times we've separated over doctrines that are not the main things, God. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for the persecution of Israel and others, God. Forgive us for our lack and concern for the poor and needy. Forgive us for turning a blind eye to racism, God. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. May a spirit of teshuva, may a spirit of repentance and return come upon believers. May it come upon all believers, all who call upon the name of Yeshua and upon the Jewish people, God. Forgive us, God. Have mercy upon us. Cause us to weep with those who weep. Cause us, you say, blessed are those who mourn. Lord, may me mourn over the state of the world. May we mourn over the state of the church. May we mourn over the state of Israel and of the pain of exile. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And we ask, we ask God, we pray Shalu Shalom Yerushalayim. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem and for the protection of Israel, your chosen people. Protect against the spirit of anti-Semitism. And we pray God against the spirit of anti-Christianity and the persecution throughout the world, throughout Africa, Asia, in the Middle East, the persecution at the hands of radical Islam and communism and radical Hinduism, God. Please, God, protect your people, Israel and the church. How long? Lord, arise, O oh God, and let your enemies be scattered. Come and dwell in our midst. And we say, Bona Ruach Elohim. Come, Holy Spirit. Bona Yeshua. Come now, Yeshua. The Ruach Vekala, the Spirit in this bride, the Omrim Bo. The Spirit in this bride, Omrim, say, Bo, say, come. Come, Yeshua, come. Speedily and soon. Amen, but amen. Friends, for all of you who are going through difficulties at this time, I pray that God would have comfort and God would have compassion and would comfort you. And I pray that God would strengthen all of you who choose to fast. for the salvation of Israel, for the comfort of God's people, for the restoration. For those of you who weep like Yeshua weep, wept, may he wipe every tear from your eyes. And for those of you who are fast, I pray that you have a som kal, an easy fast. And I bless you now in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen.